a mom is calling out parents after her daughter was bullied over her knockoff Stanley Cup. So in case you didn't know, the cups have caused a craze with stores selling out of the tumblers in minutes. But one mom says this obsession with name brand goods has gone too far. Watch. I am not going to if my daughter asks for something to help fit in with the kids at school and she feels cool and it's something that she really wants and I can do that for her, I'm going to. But we have got to teach our kids to not make other kids feel inferior for not having the things that they have. That's it. That's where it starts and it starts with us as parents. Well said. The mom eventually bought her daughter a real Stanley so she would not be bullied anymore. Now, this isn't the only craze parents are having to deal with right now. Face masks, serums, and creams topped tweens wish lists, and it's created a whole Sephora kid craze. Here's what one Sephora employee recalled about an experience with a 10-year-old girl and her mom. Take a look. These 10-year-old girls at Sephora are crazy, but what's crazier are the parents that aren't parenting. And this little girl walks up to me and her basket is literally overflowing. So I finished scanning all her products and her total came out to almost $900. So then her sister is like, well, do you have enough? And she was like, no, but I'm probably just gonna use mom's money. The mom literally freaked out. And then the mom goes, take something out. The little girl lost her mind. She's like, no, I'm not taking anything out. And the little girl's just like, because I want it. If I, growing up, if I ever, ever said anything like that to my mom, it's a wrap. <laughs> all right, so what do you think of all of this? And do you cave in or is it your job as a parent to stick to your gun in situations like this? You got three kids, Al. Yes. And your daughter, a teenager. Yes. So and how have you dealt with this? Uh, I've uh, dealt with it by putting gloves on before I get my credit card back from her because it's on fire. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it's a real thing, and my daughter is very chill. I didn't know like, where that was going. Yeah, I mean, she she's really chill, but it, and I think for what she got, it's fine. But I was shocked at the amount of money that all of these kids spend because I think if you think about where they're they're getting these ideas to buy these products. It's from TikTok. Yep. TikTok is really basically a commercial over and over again for this, this, this. So instead of engaging with cartoons like we did, they are engaging with commercials for their entertainment. And so that they're going to be like, I need this, 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 and this, where you might have just wanted one action figure, two action figures. And I think that's where a lot of parents are like, when I was growing up, when my parents spent, spent 100 bucks on Jordans, that was like my Christmas and birthday all together. Whereas 100 bucks won't get you in the door at some of these beauty places. So I definitely believe it. I just wonder what kind of standard are we setting as parents when we kind of cave in and buy that Stanley cup for her daughter. I understand she didn't want her daughter to be bullied, but you're setting, you're telling your daughter in no uncertain terms that in order for you to be friends with these people, this is what you need to own, where you need to maybe have the more difficult conversation being like they did you a favor, they're not your friends. Yes. You don't ever have to talk to them again. So you are off the hook and rather than caving and like now you can go hang with those girls until the next thing you can't afford so they can ostracize you. I'm not with that chief. See that I think I'm not a parent, but I think that's where you, you really hit the nail on the head for me in terms of my thinking, because she said in that whole rant that she went ahead and got the Stanley Cup right. because they could and she could afford it. What happens when you can't get the next thing that you can't afford? And I think sometimes it really is about setting the expectations. And these are conversations. I don't feel like any judgment towards this woman or anyone else who are having conversations about this with their children, because people do this in interpersonal relationships. You see someone that you want to be, you know, commune with, and then you want to throw the world at them the first day and you can't possibly sustain that lifestyle over the course of time. So I think setting the expectation very early is important in any type of relationship, but specifically from parent to child. And I do think it's really important to have community. I know you're really close with your community, your neighbors, because when these situations come up, I really hope the parents can get together and be like, this is what's happening. And I hope the parents, I hope I'm gonna be that parent where I can, hopefully I'll raise Sophie 
exactly in a way where it's not an issue where I have to, uh, but who knows? But I want to take accountability. I want the parents to take accountability and be like, yeah, I did hear that my daughter snickered because she had a fake Stanley Cup. How do we change that? And then you sit down with your child and you say, why did you do that? And, and, and you, you, you paint a picture of empathy so they don't repeat it. So I do think another thing we're lacking is community nowadays. Mm. You know, a lot of people do not know their neighbors. A lot of people don't know their, their children's friends, parents. And um, I know I, for one, I consider myself lucky that I live in a community that yeah. I can call someone up and say, we but gotta you also immerse out. yourself in that community. I do immerse myself in that community. <laughs>